<laughs> Welcome to our team call for November 6th. Um, I just want to mention a couple things before we dig in, and that is if you didn't see the vision call, the vision uh, 2020 call that I posted yesterday in the team page, I was watching it today, and it is literally one of the best calls I have ever heard. It is so many top coaches in one, and it is like straight fire. So make sure you get your hands on that and listen to it. Um, some point towards the end of this month or probably next month more realistically we're gonna we're gonna do a call on vision and doing vision boards but please do yourself a favor and make sure you listen to that um if that doesn't light a fire under your ass I don't <laughs> <know>. <laughs> um I just want to say to peppermint mocha the word on the street is that there still is some so if you have not ordered yours or you have customers that wanted to order that haven't gotten it yet um that's still around but it probably won't be for very long and make note too that this month every single challenge pack that is over 150 dollars is 20 dollars off so this should be a really awesome month especially with all of us that are digging into doing these free groups um if you didn't notice i put a unit in the team page with all the resources for that um and I've just been kind of popping things in the team page but something i'm doing personally in mine that's working really well is i put up a giveaway saying that for any friend that they add to the free group and tag, um, they get an entry into a raffle and it is bringing a lot of different people into my free group and allowing me to make a lot of new connections that I wouldn't make otherwise. So um, just get creative of ways how to market that and how to use it as kind of more connection building. Um, because once that group ends, you can follow up with people and let them know that they can join you and that this is, literally the cheapest they're going to be able to get started the entire year so um lots of potential for this month and before we dive in does anybody have um any recognition or shout outs that they want to go i want to shout out kelly riley uh for speaking at super saturday last weekend <laughs> um getting out of her comfort zone and if you did not see the video she made about um stories she compiled some stories of challengers in her group so just some really incredible testimonies to shakeology and how much um it has changed their life and i think it's super powerful so um shout out to you for that kelly you should probably post it in the team page because it's like super inspiring anyways does anybody else have shout outs before we get started <clears throat> I'm going to take that as a no. <laughs> All right. So, um, Kathy, I asked Kathy to speak tonight. I know that a lot of coaches this time of year um, can tend to be where, like, holidays get busy. Maybe you feel like you're getting a lot of objections. You kind of pump the brakes. You're like, oh, I didn't hit my goals this year. But this is the time to really fast forward because what we do the next two months lines us up for having a really successful next year. Um, when I was at leadership, Kathy and I were kind of chit chatting and I was like, what are you doing? Like you are on fire. Like <laughs> something shifted. If you follow Kathy, um, it's just like her commitment, her post, just her energy is crazy wild right now. And I'm like, what, what did you do? Like what happened from like last year to like right now that you are doing, um, that has changed everything for you. And I, I wanted to invite her to pop on and share about this with you because especially if you're a coach that's been around for a while you know that sometimes you can get in a rut or you can get in a funk or you miss a goal or life happens um and you kind of get off your a game and you need something to really kind of jolt you back into that fire again and i know that kathy is really gonna um dig into that tonight and it's it's gonna light a fire for everybody so kathy if you want to um just like intro yourself a little bit real quick and then yeah. dive right in but Thanks for having mm -hmm. on. Yeah, sure thing. So anyways, I've been coaching now for five and a half years. I am a wife. I'm a mom. I have three kids. I'm a seven-year-old, five-year-old, and a three-month-old. And basically just started, you know, I stopped my 10-year teaching career once I was pregnant with my firstborn, Landon. Wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. Um, wasn't able to make it work unless I found a way to earn some money, which is honestly why I got into coaching five and a half years ago. It was, I needed to lose the weight, 35 pounds, but I also needed to start earning money, money like fast <laughs> so I could stay at home. So 
Obviously, I dove all in with no plan B, balls to the wall, complete backup against the wall, state of desperation type of thing, major sacrifices, and it was totally worth it. And so that's why, thank God for this business, I've been able to be home with all the kids and I've never had to miss a moment because that was my main priority for getting into the business. So with that being said, <laughs> when you first start right into this business, I'm going to just kind of, this is kind of going to be like, just like a conversation that we're having, you know what I mean? Like at a kitchen table, like just. If anything comes to mind, just, you know, unmute yourself and whenever ask a question or comment in the chat. But anyways, when you first come into this business or any business, right, you're super excited. Like everything is like awesome. Like I'm going to the top. This is amazing. You know, you're having like crazy momentum. And then somewhere along the line, right, like roadblocks happen. Life happens. And I hear it all the time, too, even from my coaches, where they're just like, I just don't know if this is meant for me, right? And the thing is, is when that happens, it's not the business because nothing in the business has changed. And as a matter of fact, the business I feel is easier now than it was before when I first started five and a half years ago. So when that happens and you start to ask yourself, when you go from that like state of excitement, right? To all of a sudden like, yeah, I just don't really know. And you start making all these excuses and you start pointing the finger. You know, I just want you to remember that it's not the business because nothing in the business has changed. It's something inside of you that's changed. It's your mindset and your belief in you that has changed, that is getting you to say those things and feel that way. So throughout this call tonight, I'm going to kind of take you through exactly my three phases is what I want to call it of me being a coach, which was like how I was thinking, what were the thoughts that I was thinking when I came on and we were on major fire and crazy momentum and like Kathy's unstoppable and oh my God, like all that stuff. What were my actions? What was I doing? What did that look like? You know, what were my thoughts that were going through my mind? Where was my belief at? Then what happened when I hit the plateau, right? Where I plateaued for almost three years, to be completely honest, where I just like stopped growing. Where was my mindset there? Where was my belief in myself there? Like, what did it look like? What were some of the internal thoughts that I was telling myself and saying to myself? How did it affect my business? And then how I freaking came out of it, which honestly, I never, I kind of, I didn't like never think it was going to happen, but I kind of was starting to think like, when is this going to happen? Because I'm definitely not a quitter. I will not quit. I do not quit anything. I don't believe in that. I believe in figuring things out and working your way through it. And so I always kind of knew I'd figure it out, but I was kind of like, like, when's it going to happen? It's been a long time. So I'm going to just kind of start out with these two things that maybe you should write down because I'm going to kind of go through them through my, my uh, presentation tonight, which is you are the thinker of your thoughts and we do what we are. So those two things, you are the thinker of your thoughts and we do what we are. Because it's funny because for the first two years in this business, all the team calls that I did for different leaders in the company, they all revolved around my uh, having a positive mindset. Um, an extreme belief in yourself and where you were going with this business and how to gain momentum fast by taking action. Like that was my jam. That was my call that I did for all different leaders in the company. And that was like, boom. And my mindset was my strength. Like that was my strength. It was like, I felt untouchable. I honestly never thought I'd be having a call like this, but I, cause I was like, mindset and belief is my jam. It is my strength. But back then when I came in, right, like people couldn't believe how quickly I built the team how the heck did I earn six figures in 11 months? Like how did we rank to 10 star in 15 months and get out of debt that fast? And everybody always wanted to know, like, tell me what you're doing. Tell me your secret, secret, secret. Like, what are you doing? And at the end of the day, guys, it was all my mindset and belief in myself. Like I'm talking 110% belief in myself with where I was going. And so I was on fire because of that. I literally felt unstoppable. Like I never thought that my, um, confidence in myself would ever be touched. I just didn't. I just thought that's not going to be me. Like that's not going to be my, my struggle in this business because that's my strength. You know, I had tons of confidence. And now remember that your thoughts create your beliefs and then your beliefs are what go on to create your actions that you take. Okay. So because I had these thoughts that like, yes, like we're doing awesome. We're going all the way. I really truly believed it. And then I had no problem like putting in the action, right? And it wasn't just action, like pointless action. It was action backed up with like 100% certainty and belief in myself, which is a huge difference between just going through the motions. My excitement and energy was literally through the roof, right? 
And my posting, when I posted, you know, believe it or not, like you think it's not going to be effective, but it does. My posting was spot on back then. Everyone around me could feel it. They could all feel my energy. My team could feel it. My team page was freaking blowing up. It was booming. There was tons of engagement, tons of energy going on in there. New people were literally just drawn to me. And I literally felt like if I could just talk to anybody <laughs> for just like one minute, like I know that I could get anybody to join me. I was like, yeah, I know that could happen. Like I was so spot on with my workouts and my nutrition. I was in the best shape of my life. That is literally how much unwavering faith and everything I had in belief in myself, right? So you hear all those different things that, that I had that I had going on, like when things were going awesome, like when I was in that high. And now, <clears throat> the thing was is, you know, now I had, been, I had been stuck at this plateau for like a little over two and a half years and I could not figure out why. See, when you're in this whole like plateau, if you want to call it, or when you hit a roadblock, you're like almost in like a fog. <laughs> like, it's like, you can't really see it. Like, you don't even really know it. Like, even if people kind of point it out to you, like, it's kind of like if you're in a crappy relationship, not that I've ever been in one, but you know, like if someone who's in like a crappy relationship and you try to tell them like, you know, this guy really doesn't treat you too well and they just can't see it because they have their love blinders on. Well, that was like me with this business. I like didn't see it. Like I knew I wasn't, wasn't growing anymore. It wasn't like my, my business completely broke apart, but I just like stopped growing and I couldn't figure out why. And it was driving me nuts because I'm a massive control freak and I was still going through the motions guys. So I just want to make this clear. Like when I was going through this, I was still going through the motions, right? I was still bringing on coaches. I was still hitting success club 10 and all that stuff. It wasn't like I pieced out and checked out of my business or anything like that. No way. But we all know that just going through those actions, right? isn't enough going through the actions without having that belief or that mindset that like I can do this or going through the actions without excitement is literally going to get you nowhere. Like you can, you can do all those actions that are on the business activity tracker till you're blue in the face. <laughs> and you can tell your coach like, but I sent like 20 invites every day and I did all my follow-ups, but it doesn't matter because if you don't have that excitement in you at all, people can feel it and you will have a very hard time growing your business. You will be stuck. And that was me. I was just stuck. My energy wasn't the way that it was in the beginning. It just was not. Things just weren't the same. And then I started to have this series of things now start to happen in my life and in my business where I started to now associate myself as a failure, which I never thought I would do. Like I was like, I'm a winner. <laughs> like I'm not a failure. And I started to kind of associate myself now almost as like a failure. I started to think that, I started to think these things like I'm not good enough, Maybe I wasn't meant to have long-term success in this or with this business. Lots of self-doubt started to creep in. And I was literally just getting myself into like, I was getting my mind into a really negative headspace, which is, if you know me, so not me guys. <laughs> like I am like upbeat, positive, you know, you know, glasses half full type of person. And so that was even driving me even more crazy because it was like, I couldn't get it out of my head. And so here are some of the things now that was happening. Like this is where the difference is where you start to see between the beginning where I came on, like balls to the wall, tons of excitement, tons of belief, mindset, totally all taken care of to now. Um, this is the different things that started to happen. I definitely rolled the high of the release of the 21 day fix. Okay. When that ran its course, you know, growth was not as fast for me. And again, I internalized that instead of being like, this is like a network wide thing right now. It's not even you. Like I took it upon myself when things started to slow down, started to kind of blame myself and point the finger at myself. When we rank advanced to 10 star in the first 15 months. And then shortly after coaches started quitting, they started going to other, other network marketing companies where they were like dangling the carrot in front of their face. They started to leave, 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 leave. And they started to quit again. I started to be like, what's wrong with me? Like I must not be, as good as a leader as I thought I would, because why are all these people leaving? Like, what is going on here? Then I gradually started withdrawing from consistently showing up on team calls. I just stopped doing it. I was like, well, they're plugged into this other weekly team call. I don't really need to go on these calls. Like I kind of went through that phase where I was like, I already know everything. What am I gonna possibly learn? Which is the wrong way to be guys. Like every time there's a call, like, 
you should be on there listening, thinking, what can I take from this that's going to help me grow? And I was in such a negative headspace, I wasn't even thinking like that anymore, right? Um, my team page, guys, it went from like being like super booming and like exciting and like tons of energy to just completely dwindling down. Not many people posting in it or engaging in it. Not that many comments on any of the things that I would share when I got in there. It was like a total shit show. I was in and out of workout programs, guys, and I had literally gained 30 pounds. I was the heaviest I was in my entire life, heavier than when before I started this business after I had my second baby. And so I was literally just like doing workouts in my bedroom, like whoop de doo. <laughs> there was Kathy, like press and play, doing her workout in her bedroom, big deal. There was no story behind it, there was no journey behind it, there was nothing for anybody to attach themselves and relate to me for it all because I didn't have a story. It was just, there I am doing a workout in my bedroom. And I wasn't getting any results because I was not committed to anything. It was just like doing workouts, right? Um, the whole thing was just like a major freaking downward spiral. So then in my personal life, now I started pointing my fingers at all these different things, okay guys? <laughs> in my personal life, both my dogs had died within a five week period. We had moved out of our home that we had lived in for 10 years and we were relocating down to Florida, which actually was a good thing and was because of this business, right? But again, I took it as like more stress. Um, we had been trying for baby number three for like an entire year and I had four miscarriages along the way. So that was tons of stress. When I finally did get pregnant with Keegan, who is now three months old, right? We actually delivered him August 1st. Um, when I was 35 weeks pregnant, that's when I found out that my dad was diagnosed with leukemia and was going to have to be treated at Mass General in Boston and go through chemo and get a stem cell transplant. It was all these things. Um, it was just crazy. And as a matter of fact, when I heard that news, guys, we had actually had our very first diamond. We hadn't had a diamond pop in like two years on my team. I had finally had a diamond pop and I had, fl I had flown her down to my home in Florida and mastermind with her and like spoiled her. It was like her reward for like really reaching this rank that she was trying so hard to reach. And it was when she was there, I was in the car ride home, driving her to the airport. That's where I got the call about my dad. And I was like, damn it. And that's when literally everything changed for me. And it was just a crap show guys, as you can see with everything between business and personal life all around, just a major crap show, right? And now my mind is, was in this total negative headspace and I had completely stopped growing in my business. So I started pointing my finger now at all these different things as to why I stopped growing. And I started to even look back at the past and look at things from the past. And I started to get resentful and all these different things. And what I didn't realize was that every single moment that I was spending dwelling on the past was, a, was literally robbing me from a moment of me being in the present where I could actually do something to grow and change my situation. But I was too busy living in the past, pointing my finger at all these other things, thinking about where I should be, pointing my finger at other people, other things in my life happening, other things in the business happening. It was ridiculous. And then, because I felt so bad about myself, I started justifying to make myself feel better. So I'd say things like this, Kathy, but I mean, look how far you've come. I mean, when you came into the business, all you wanted to earn was a couple hundred dollars. Like you're, you were earning six figures your first 11 months. You never had any desire to pay off your credit card debt. You're debt free. Like all these things, right? I was just like justifying it as to why like as it being okay that I completely stopped growing, right? I started putting these things into my mind. But guys, it's way more fun, right? When you're growing, isn't it? Than when you're like just standing still struggling. And I wasn't, I wasn't growing. I had completely flatlined. And this is where it all changed. <laughs> and I have like, just, just to make this clear too, I'd have these like little episodes, these like one to two week bursts of energy where I'd be like, this is it. Like, I'm coming out of it. Like, I think I would seriously tell Dana that. Like, this is it. Like, you know. <laughs> and then I'd be like, oh. And the average coach would have quit, guys. But damn, this is a business. And you can't quit. You can't quit a business. Like, really. This is life. It's going to happen. If you haven't been through it yet, guys, you're going to go through it. It's just inevitable. I wasn't unique to the situation. This is something that everybody goes through when they own their own business. Not just network marketing. Not just coaching. Business in general. Okay? 
Now, this is what happened. I was going for a walk around the field here up in Massachusetts. I'm still here. I'm not in my home in Florida yet. Um, and me, Nick, and the baby go for a walk like every day after we drop the two kids off at school. And we do like a two to three mile walk. And every single day we listen to personal development. That's kind of like my miracle morning because I'm not able to have an actual miracle morning <laughs> at five o'clock in the morning with the kids here. We, you know, we don't even want to attempt that. So we listen to personal development every day, every day, every day. And all of a sudden, and we were listening to this podcast and I don't care who you are or how long you've been doing this for, you need to listen to this podcast and you're going to want to listen to it like three or four times. <laughs> it's so good. It's unbelievable. I was listening to this podcast. It was the Mind Your Business podcast. That's the name of the podcast. So the Mind Your Business podcast. Go to episode number 114. And it is how to reprogram your subconscious mind. So how to reprogram your subconscious mind for automatic and lasting high. So the Mind Your Business podcast episode number 114 how to reprogram your subconscious mind for automatic and lasting high and this is where i had my epiphany and i didn't even know it was coming <laughs> all of a sudden the guy says you are the thinker of your thoughts and i'm not even kidding you guys it was like my life entire life flashed in front of me i couldn't believe it I had actually been living my entire life self-sabotaging myself like the way I had been doing for the past two and a half to almost three years in this business. Putting these BS lies in my head every time I didn't live up to my expectations or I hit a goal or fall short of a goal, I'd have success, but then it would stop me from where I could really go with it because of this lie that I was telling myself, this story that I was telling myself, that I literally was make, making up in my mind and rehearsing subconsciously and living it every single day. And I was like, oh my God, Nick, I have literally been doing this my entire freaking life. Like I never even realized it. All of a sudden I thought back to like all these times where I felt like, eh, you're not that good at that. or mm, You're not as good as you thought you were. I thought back to when I when I was a basketball player and I was like an amazing basketball player and they played me the whole game and I was like the shooter and I'd get the highest points. And you, <laughs> I'd be like in the newspapers and all this stuff. And like, and I loved it. Right. I love being on that high. I love getting that kind of recognition. I love knowing that I had something that I was really good at. Right. And I really, really believed that I was good at it. I mean, I would practice every single day in my driveway growing up at my, at my parents' house like shot after shot after shot, like perfecting the angle of it and everything. It was like my jam. And then all of a sudden, and I mean, I was playing on like the varsity team and everything when I was like a sophomore. And then all of a sudden, somebody else started to come along that was a little bit better than me. And they stopped playing me as much. Now they didn't bench me, right? I was still playing pretty much almost the entire game. And then when that happened, I started to think, See, you're obviously really not that good or as good as you thought you were because now you're not even playing the whole game anymore, right? And your coach is on the sidelines screaming at you. <laughs> like, did anybody ever tell me that I wasn't good at basketball? No, right? No one ever said that. Everybody always told me how amazing I was. Like, oh my gosh, like Kathy, she's amazing at basketball. You are so good at that. That's your strength, right? I did the same thing when I became a teacher. Went to school, stayed there for five years got my master's in special education, got the dual certification, got hired right away, you know, had observation after observation after observation, student teaching, you know, again, teaching was one of my strengths. It was something I was really good at. I had a lot of patience with the kids, right? It was like amazing. I, I was really great at being a good teacher and all my write-ups from everybody, same thing, right? It's amazing how you have such amazing, like, class control with this group of 25 kindergartners and they have they you have their attention and they're all quiet and they're engaged so right all these positive 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 things happening right positive feedback positive feedback and then i had one observation that's all it took one observation from one guy 
And you know, he didn't PB and J it like you're supposed to. You're supposed to say the good things, then give the constructor criticism and end it good. Don't we know that guys? Come on. No, he started out with like tons and I'm talking like tons of constructor criticism. And I walked away from that so red in the face and so defeated. I went back to my classroom. I basically, there was like a powwow going on in my classroom with every single teacher in there. They couldn't believe the, what he, how he talked to me and everything. But again, I sat there and thought, you're not that great of a teacher. And by the way, that basketball story too, I quit after that year. I never quit in the middle. I would never quit in the middle of something because my parents taught me that that is not okay need to finish what you started, but I didn't go back. And that's like one of my one regrets that I have. Like, I don't have many, that's one of them. That with teaching. And then I noticed now I'm doing it again with my business where it stopped growing. And I was like, I could not believe it. As I was walking around this field with Nick, like I must've talked about it for like two miles straight. All those times where I was taking my mess ups or not living up to my expectations, or falling short on a goal as me being a failure. That's how I was taking it. I was taking those mess ups as me being a failure, me not being good enough. Like you're not, you're not gonna be good enough for this. You're not as good as you thought you were. You're not gonna go all the way like you had planned. Give it up. This is as good as it's gonna get for you, right? So me not being good enough and me not having what it takes, right? And I'm sure some of you guys maybe can relate to this. I had, I, this was like a major epiphany of mine. And like I said, I never quit, but that was a story that I was telling myself now, right? Day in and day out, I was saying these things. And that's the kicker, guys, is that no one ever told me, right, that I wasn't good at basketball. They never said, you're not a good teacher. No one ever said, Kathy, you know, you're not a good coach. Maybe this isn't for you. It was the opposite. Everybody always said how awesome I was at those things. And it was like, I didn't even hear it. Yet I was getting myself into this negative headspace and I couldn't get out of it. I couldn't grow and I couldn't get to that next level in my business until I learned the lessons that I needed to learn. Which is why literally I was stuck for so long. Like you have to go through this and figure it out to get to the next level. And when you're at your lowest of your lows, right, is where you're going to have like your biggest breakthroughs. So you're probably not going to stay stuck for as long as I did. I don't think that that's probably normal, but maybe, maybe you did. But the lesson was whatever does or doesn't happen to you in life, you're going to have thoughts about those things, guys. You're going to be thinking thoughts. So you got to be very careful with the thoughts that go through your mind because you are the thinker of those thoughts. You are the one creating that story. You are the one putting those lies in your head and then believing them. No one else is. You are. You're making the story up. And I guarantee that you can think, all of you on here right now can think of one time that you did that. Or maybe you're doing it now to something. Oh, I didn't get invited to this because, you know, obviously she's pissed at me. Or maybe she doesn't like me. Or, oh man. Whatever it is. Like, dumb stuff. You're probably doing it. And when I finally had this epiphany, it was legit, guys. I'm not even shitting you like a light switch turned on in my brain. It was so crazy. It was instantly, I instantly went from that whole mindset, right? To, oh my God, Kathy, you are awesome. Like, but like really believing it. Like you are awesome. Like you are a freaking rock star coach, damn it. You are a top team, right? You're a top coach. You're, you're freaking limitless. And my energy did a complete turn, like a legit complete turn, guys. I'm not even kidding. It didn't even take long. It took like a week. My entire team page started booming again, right? I re-inspired so many coaches on my team who were MIA. Like, where are these people? Where'd they go? I guess they're gone. They peaced out. I have brought them back to life again. Not because I even had to reach out to them, because they could see and feel my energy. My income has gone way up. Over the past just couple months, guys, of me having this major epiphany switch of me getting my energy back. And people now are coming to me again, right? They're coming to me again because they can feel my energy. Last month, I literally hit Success Club 10 in five days. And I had my highest Success Club point numbers these past two months because of the switch. I literally went from like feeling like I had to twist people's arms to get to SC10 
to like two months in a row being at Success Club 16 and then Success Club 20. And it felt hard before. Like it felt like, why aren't these people joining me? Like, why are they signing up with me? And now, and like, I was like, why aren't any of these active coaches doing anything, damn it, <laughs> right? Then the freaking thing is, guys, is that brutally honest, if you don't have belief in yourself, how do you expect to bring people onto the team and believe in them that they're going to make it when you don't even believe in yourself? It's not going to happen. It's going to be completely counterproductive. You're not going to bring on quality coaches. I brought on 60 coaches. When I was going through this plateau in my bad mindset, not one of them had a success club point. Not one. And it wasn't them. Granted, you can't get everybody. But it wasn't them. It was me. It was my story I was telling myself. It was my lack of belief in myself. It was my confidence that was kind of chipped away. And my excitement that was completely gone. Because guys, at the end of the day, if you don't have freaking excitement for this, you are going to struggle. You have to get the energy and have the energy. That is what people are drawn to. They don't care that you earn six figures in a year. They want to see you fired up with energy and enthusiasm and passion. It's all different. My posting is different now. I'm bringing in, I mean, I'm talking, I literally brought in nine active coaches last month, nine of them. And I'm talking quality, awesome coaches who are just like me who just had babies and the business literally seems so easy now. Like I said before, it felt like I was twisting people's arms to join me. It seems so easy now. It's unbelievable because of that one shift of me realizing that the reason why you're stuck where you are is because you kept telling yourself the story that you're not good enough and you're not going to make it and shut up because that's not true. <laughs> like no one's telling that to you. So now I got to be really careful. Because what I've learned is that, you know, you are going to have failures, right? But it's all about how you deal with them. And I used to always say like, oh, yes, like you're going to learn from the failures, blah, 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 blah. But I never really knew how hard it was going to hit me <laughs> until it hit me. And now I know that when you do have these hurdles that happen, you really, really have to know that this is not mean that you suck. You are not unique to this. This is something everybody goes through who is looking to grow in life. And you have to go through it and you have to figure yourself out and you have to find a way to keep the energy so that people are excited and they want to be a part of it because people didn't want to be a part of my journey before. I didn't even have a freaking journey for anybody to follow. Now it's clear cut. So look at like what you're doing. Like why are you showing up doing your workout every day? Like, why do you get up at five o'clock in the morning and you put it on your Insta stories? Do people know like what is your story with that is? Like what your journey is with that? Do they know why you're getting up and pressing play every single day? Three years, five years, six years later like me? Do they know? Because if there's no story and there's no journey there, it's gonna be very hard for people to want to follow you and attach onto you and get excited for you. Now that I have a clear cut, all right, that's it. Kathy's doing the morning meltdown 100. She is doing this because she is postpartum and she chose the 100 day program because her father was going through a 100 day isolation period following his stem cell transplant. And every day I'm showing up and every day, I'm sh every week I'm showing progress and it's like clockwork. So what is your story with that? There's no doubt that definitely helped me also get my energy back was when I recommitted to the workouts and actually gut results. And even if you're in awesome shape, guys, trust me, I got some people on my team that could like crush me with their abs, all right? There are other areas in your life that you need to work on and improve. It could be internal. Maybe it's your mindset. Maybe you're doing it because you want to have more peace at home, but there's got to be something there that you're sharing. So you have to really know and understand that there's going to be the failures along the way. It's totally okay. But you got to go through them and you got to keep, you got to learn from them and you got to keep growing. And guess what now, guys, now that I've actually come through this, there are other people that I see in the network on my team who are going through the same thing and I can actually help them. Whereas before 
I couldn't explain what the heck was going on. I didn't know what was happening. Like I said, I was in that fog. I just could not see it. And now that I'm through it and everything is clear and I understand, now I look back and I'm like, I can see it all a lot more clearly. And I was literally living that no growth phase with a total fixed mindset versus a growth mindset, which is totally BS. That's not me either, right? And like I said, it was the thing that snapped me out of it was you are the thinker of your thoughts. Like actions are good, guys. You can, actions are great. You need to be taking action. But where's your mindset when you're taking those actions in this business? So listen to that podcast. Maybe it will help you. I'm sure it will. I guarantee it will actually. It's going to help every single one of you. You're going to be able to find something in that. You're going to probably have to listen to it again. This is like my new call now that I do for the different teams. And people are listening to that podcast and it's really helping them. Um, and now, like as I'm going through my days, like, you know, sometimes I will have like a quick, it's not like I don't have those thoughts anymore. Like every now and then I'll be like, but can you? Shut up, Kathy. <laughs> like, stop it. Yes, you can. Right? Yes, you can. You will do this. You are doing this. Like, and it's constantly repeating those things. And what I did to really help me out, and I actually kind of did this before I legit had my epiphany. Um, because I was, you know, again, I was always trying to figure out like how the hell do I get out? Like, how do I go? I'm seeing everybody in the business, these new people coming on. I'm going to leadership. I'm like hearing these people talk. They've been doing it for two years. Like, Who the hell is she? Right. I'm like, there are people coming into this business every single day, like having major success. There are people coming in now that are going to go on to build six figure, multiple six figure incomes that are going to grow on to be five stars, 10 stars, superstars. So if they can do it, we can do it too. I can do it too. And so as I was trying to figure out how to like break through this thing before I had this epiphany, you know, everybody always says like, oh, well, write out your goals. Like I am a 10 star diamond. I am an elite team. I said, you know what? Screw all that. <laughs> because you know what? This is the truth. You can stand there in the mirror as long as you want and chant these things. I am an elite team. I am an elite coach. I am a 10 star diamond. I am whatever you want to say. But if you don't possess and believe that you truly have the characteristics of the type of person that can go on to achieve those things, you won't achieve them. So instead of me going and sitting down, writing all these goals, I have in my phone, I literally have on my phone and every single, every single morning, I have it in my notes and I have a list of like, I am statements. And I literally wrote down all the different things and this is going to be different for everybody but i wrote down i am and i read it and i literally read it every single morning and i wrote down i am confident right because you think about all these like things that you want to achieve in life or in business right you have to possess these things first and really believe them in yourself and you're not just like born with them you have to practice this stuff and really get yourself to believe that you are that type of person and then when you have those things those Goals that you set for yourself are going to automatically happen, guys. That's how it happened to me at the beginning of the business. It wasn't because I set these big goals. I didn't set a goal of, you know, like whatever, becoming a 10 star. It just kind of happened because I was on fire and I really believed myself. So I wrote down, I am confident. I am a leader. I am consistent. I follow through with things and finish them. I am enthusiastic. I am courageous. I am a dreamer. I am solution oriented. I have a growth mindset. I am blessed no matter what happens, and I am intentional with my time. And there was this one phrase, I think it was from the same podcast, where it said, and this might not do it for you, but I'm proving to Nick that it actually is true. <laughs> it is, everything that is mine by divine right comes to me in perfect order today. So everything that is mine by divine right comes to me in perfect order today. And I was like, when I first heard it, I was like, that's kind of stupid, but I'll write it down because he said it's really important. And now every day I wake up and I literally say that. And it's amazing how the day goes because I said that. Nick even was like, I don't really know about that, Kathy. And now things are starting to happen. And I'm like, see, Nick, because everything by my divine right comes to me in perfect order today. <laughs> and he's, you know, believing it now. So 
I hope that this call helped, helped you guys. Um, just remember when you go through it, don't blame the business. Don't blame the people. None of that has changed. Only thing has changed is the story that you're telling yourself inside. Um, and you got to change the story. You got to change. You have to get the energy period. Energy and excitement drives everything in this business, everything. So hopefully that helped you guys. I don't know if you guys have any questions about anything. Yeah, my, oh, my car. I do. Oh yeah, go ahead. All right. I want to know about your conversations. Like when you're talking with people, is it like, you'd be crazy not to join me? Like, uh, like what are you telling people? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I basically, first of all, I do have a lot of people like coming to me now just because of the mere fact of me being for the past 52 days. Um, yeah, you're welcome. Just for me, the past 52 days being so consistent now with doing my workouts and showing the progress now, like every, whatever it is, Monday night or something like that. Like it's like, Kathy's going to show the before and afters. So I do get a lot of people just from like putting polls on my Instagram stories. Um, just by using, you know, we use like um, a swipe up thing sometimes, but it's more so the polls. But more importantly is we're really connecting now and engaging with like really awesome people that are just like me um, all through Instagram. Like I don't really do much through Facebook anymore. It, the, the business is different. So before I used to be like, you know, pump out the invites, like invite, invite, invite. And people are like, I'm by like, did like 70 and like no one's writing back that doesn't work anymore. Like the cold inviting and shit like that. Like you could get away with that five and a half years ago. When I started, you maybe get the occasional person. Now that's why they got rid of that invite, invite, invite. And now it's connect, invite, follow up. You really have to connect. So we spend a lot of our time now on Instagram connecting with other moms who are literally just like me with like three months old, three month olds or like babies at home. Um, and just by me having conversations with them, if I see that they view my story, my, I do the same kind of message to everybody. And I basically am like, like for my before and after the other day I did, like, I'll reach out and be like, Hey, Hey, Annalisa, like, thanks so much for supporting my before and after it means so much to me. I'm a work in progress, but getting there one day at a time. Like anyways, it means so much that you're showing me some love. I really appreciate that. Were you looking to hear more about doing the online fit club with me or doing this with me? Or were you just showing me some love? That's literally all I say. And then when I do get behind the scenes, uh, yeah, I do say when I start talking to them, I'm like, you, you need to do this. Like, you got to do this. Like, you would be crazy not to do this. Um, but then also for the people who are kind of dragging their feet, I'm not like desperate to get them. And I literally will just, if I follow up with them after a certain amount of times, now my new thing is, is I literally tell them like, hey, you know, this is the last time I'm going to check in. Like, I really, I don't want to be a pest. Um, just let me know if you want to do this. If I don't hear back from you, I'm just going to take your name off my list for now. And I can always check back in with you next month or the following, whatever works for you. So just let me know either way. So I kind of just like very confident so that people know, like, I don't need you. Like this freaking ship is sailing. Like it's going with or without you, baby. <laughs> um, but yeah, my energy, my energy and everything, like my posting is different. Like Dana was saying, like you can see a clear cut, like a very significant difference between how I was posting versus then versus now. Um, again, like you could be saying the best excited message to somebody, but if you don't, again, have that really personally have that excitement yourself for it, like they're going to, it's like crazy. People can feel that. Like they will just see right through it. It will not work. Um, so that has changed too. Um, Kathy, I want to, yeah. I want to bring something up that I see that you do that I think is, um, so awesome. I think it just goes back to the energy that you have about it because you're confident. You're confident in what you're inviting people to and you're confident in your belief in yourself. But right. in your posts and in your stories, I've noticed that you speak directly to the person that you're looking for. Like you're like, I don't want people that want to bullshit this. <laughs> like I want oh, yeah. people that actually want to commit, that want to do this with me, that want to like see this through. Like you are literally telling people what you are looking for versus saying what you're offering and then hoping they're going to resonate with that. If that exactly. Works. And it is so true. I was, and like, I was even telling Nick that before, like before I was just kind of like, I, I was kind of talking to like, I was kind of talking to like any kind of mom, like any kind of mom. It was like, I knew I wanted like a mom, 
but I was just kind of talking to like any mom. And then I'm like, screw that. Like, I don't want any kind of mom. Like, no, I don't want the mom. I'm sorry, but I don't want the mom, mom, mom. I don't want the mom that wants to leave their kids and go to work. I don't because that's not me and that's not my story. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Everybody does their thing, but that's not my people. Like my people are the ones who are like, shit, like I can't believe my maternity leave is ending. Like, oh my God, I'm so sad. I'm devastated. I'm having panic attacks. Like I would do anything to be home with my kids right now. Like, tell me what to do. Like, is there a way? Like, those are my people because that was me when I first started. It was like, when Nick told me like, you're going back to work when I had a four month old and a 22 month old, it was like, oh, no, shit shit. Like, and that's why I went so balls to the wall at the beginning, because that's what I wanted. And so now, yeah, I am like very like, like these are the moms that I want, you know? And yeah, like when you come on and you join me, like you're going to have to put in the work and you're going to have to make temporary sacrifices just like me, um, that kind of thing. So I definitely am like way more like, you know, like <laughs> whatever that symbol is that I'm doing. <laughs> It makes a difference though, it really does. And I thought that I was being kind of specific before, but I really, but I mean, you, you know, everybody would always say like, don't be afraid to ask for like what you want and like the kind of like person that you want and everything. And like, it was almost like I thought that like people were gonna think I was like offending them or something like that because they were going back to work and that's not it at all. Like, I don't think anything bad about people that go back to work at all. That's not, I think everybody has to do what they, think is right for their family and everyone's just trying to support their family for God's sakes. But I wanted like the people like me who were like, do or die. Like this has to work. So I don't have to go back to teaching. So those are the people now that I'm bringing in. Like, honestly, the people I'm bringing in are the ones who are like, I'm like, so why did you decide to, to sign up with me? Like, what, what was it? Well, I just had my baby and I want to be home. Like you are, I do not want to go back to work. It gives me sheer anxiety thinking about somebody else rocking my baby to sleep for naps. And you know, they say the whole thing. They're like me. It was all the same thoughts I had, you know, almost six years ago when I had to go back. Um, it, you know, so I'm getting a lot of those people and I'm getting a lot of the people too, who are also like pregnant and are going to be having their babies like soon because they see me home with like Keegan every day. And they like, I don't want to go back to work. Like, help me. <laughs> But I mean, it's so much easier now, guys, to build the, to build the business than it was before. I mean, now it's like with Instagram and everything, like I know this is kind of a little bit unrelated, but not really. I mean, you can really dial in to like super, super, super specific, narrowed down hashtags and find like you and like connect with them and actually build real relationships with them. It's so easy versus before when I wasn't even using Instagram like five years ago and didn't even have an account. You just randomly friend requesting people on Facebook, hoping that I had something in common with them. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like now every single person that I'm connecting with is, is like exactly like me. So Kathy, I noticed that Nick shared in your team page the other day, like a video of how you guys do your Instagram. Would he be open to coming another night to talk on the team call, like to share how you guys yeah. are connecting with people on Instagram? Yeah. And actually too, we were just talking about this. We're going to do a team call, uh, like for my team too, um, soon, probably like in the next like week or two. So when we do it, I'll just invite your team too, and we can coordinate so we can just do like one big whole thing because it's so simple. And like, you only need to do it for like 10 to 15 minutes a day. And it'll easily, easily give you guys 10 new people every single day to connect with. Like, seriously, it's, it's a game changer. So, yeah. I love that. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's amazing I mean it's literally night and day like how things have turned for me like yeah. in the business and even like for Nick too like when I was going through that whole like plateau phase I mean Nick wasn't excited about the business like anymore like he kind of stopped doing like a lot of the stuff that he was doing to help me out like we were just kind of like meh and like who the heck wants to join you when you're like meh <laughs> no one so true yeah so true so just remember that you are the thinker of your thoughts. If I would sum up your call, I would say energy is everything. <laughs> oh yeah. It is literally like, it is the energy. It is literally the energy. Like, I can't believe it. Like I'm getting people signing up with me now, guys, that I literally spent two years talking to in the past that like blew me off and was like, no, sorry, but I love my orange theory. Not going to do it. Next thing you know, they're like, I want to be just like you and do everything you're doing. And I don't care how much it costs me. Tell me exactly what it, 
right? Before it was like, I was like, why like 160 challenge pack? It was like so hard to sell. I'm like, this is so cheap. Why is it so hard for me to sell this freaking thing? <laughs> it, was like, it was literally just all me. You know what I mean? Because you see people, like I said, there's people coming into this business, guys, every day having massive success. So <laughs> that means that you and I can both do the same thing. Yeah. I love it. Totally. Love it. Buddy, have questions for Kathy? Does anybody relate to some of the things you talked about? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Back in the day, I was like, that's not going to be me. <laughs> that was me too. I was yeah. like, I am a freight train. <laughs> like, yeah, I was like, oh, what happened. Yeah, me too. I was like, oh, screw that. That's not going to be me. I'm going way too fast for any of that to stop me. My mindset and belief, that's never going to go away. <laughs> Next thing you know, it was like, and it wasn't like I was like, <laughs> oh my God, just thank God that's over with. Damn, that was a, that was a, that was a whirlwind. Yeah, but I think something that you said that is so important is that every, everyone's going to go through this at some point. And I, I remember having a conversation with you like a year ago and you saying something like, I just don't know if this business is like, if it's possible to have success anymore. Like I remember you and yeah, me telling exactly. me a conversation of like, I don't know, like if this is something I should be doing anymore or whatever. But what you said that I think is so important is that when we get in these phases, like I've been struggling the last year too, and I feel like things are finally shifting because my energy is shifting and my mindset is shifting. And just like you're saying, like what I'm telling myself is shifting and mm -hmm. what I'm focusing on is changing. Right. And so right. When you focus on the failures and what you did and resentment and placing blame and all that shit, like it does absolutely nothing to get you out of the spot you're in. But I think what you say that is so important is you commit to figuring it out. Like you commit to like, okay, I'm still showing up even though I don't feel super emotionally connected to it, but like I am determined to figure this out so I can feel that way again because I'm not gonna quit. Like I'm gonna keep showing up until I figure it out. Yeah. And that's something that I think is so important in this business. Like everyone goes through phases where you have lows or you miss goals or you feel in a funk or like you're not super yeah. energetic, but like you have to commit to know that you're going to figure it out because right. at any point it can be a totally new beginning for what's possible going forward. And I love that you're totally proof of that, of like everything was hard selling, selling a challenge pack was hard. And now yeah. look what's happened. Like boom, when, when you shifted. It's absolutely crazy. Like I, I didn't know why I was in such a funk. I didn't know that the funk was really created by me. I was like, Oh my God. Like, what if I, like I, I was literally the one doing it to myself. Yeah. Like what is it? But I didn't know it. <laughs> like I literally didn't even know it. Which takes self-awareness to, huh? Look, yeah, like it takes self-awareness to observe that of like, there is nothing except myself right in my own way <laughs> <laughs> i know so <laughs> stupid <laughs> hashtag human growing pains yeah and this is good because like you know like i was saying you know when you go through these things like the low of the low is when you're going to be followed by you know the biggest breakthroughs on the other side of that and so it's like most people will quit when it gets like that yeah. but you just can't like you have to know that yeah you're going to get through it you're going to come out on the other end and you're going to have like your biggest breakthrough. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> it's like the chaos comes before the breakthrough always. <laughs> oh, it came. <laughs> Crazy. Who is fired up after hearing this? Is anybody like, hell yeah, I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> figure this shit out. <laughs> right. Just remember, it's all about what you tell yourself. So when you look in your mirror every day or when you sit down to do your work for your business, right? What are the thoughts that you're telling yourself? Are you saying, yeah, I can do this. I'm a, there are so many people out there who want this, who need my help. Are you saying, damn it, everybody I message says no, right? Be careful. <laughs> That's true. It's, I was listening to a podcast, I don't know, earlier this week that was saying, it's all about the story you keep telling yourself. Like you, right. you believe in the story you keep telling yourself. Oh yeah. It's like, it's so true. Oh my God. It like, it literally, it is so true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyways. 
Thank you, Kathy. Yeah, I'm glad you guys liked it. I will, uh, if anything else comes to mind, just uh, let me know. Been there, done that. I can say that now. <laughs> and you guys, I would highly suggest going and following Kathy and seeing the way that she shares in her posts, like speaking directly to the people she's looking for, but also like pop through her Instagram stories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you're totally here. I follow you because I love you. Make me laugh and I love you. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's so awesome that you just literally are not afraid to be so confident to put it out there exactly what you're looking for and be unapologetic that that's what you want and who you want to work with. And I know retaining anything else. When I was lacking that confidence for that two and a half year span, that's why I didn't do it because I lacked that confidence, you know? And, and like I said earlier, if like you don't have that belief in yourself that you can make it all the way, how do you expect anybody else to do it that's going to join you? They're not going to either. Yeah. Right? Well, but I think too, when you're kind of in a struggle, you tend to be like, I want to help anyone, like anyone who will say yes to me versus like, <laughs> I'm so confident that I know what I'm looking for and this is what I want. And like, hopefully that's you. But it, like I know. You said, if it's not, I'm going with or without you. And I love that so much. Yep. It's like, bye. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, so I hope that helped you guys. And uh, yeah, we'll put together that call yes. for uh, Nick to do the Instagram thing. Yeah, I know a lot of us are trying to grow on Instagram and not, <laughs> not really. The whole before. business. That was another thing. I, I shot myself in the foot, guys. Honestly, I built my business on Facebook. And I was really late to the game going to Instagram because I was like, but Facebook is what was working for me. And like, that's one of the things about on your own business is that when the times change, like you got to change. And I had to relearn like how to build my business on a totally different social media platform before, because if what you're doing isn't working, like you have to figure out a new way. And like Facebook was not working the way it was working for me before at all, you know, and I had to reteach myself a whole new way, but now it's easier than ever before. Like it is so much easier. Like I literally was really late to the game going to Instagram, but Instagram is where it's at. Yeah. And you don't feel like, like, you don't feel like you're spamming anybody. You don't feel like, are these my people? Like you literally can find your people. It's so awesome. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Well, we will look forward to that call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll keep it posted. We want to do it really soon because still have some people, a lot of people on my team that are still like Facebook. I'm like, Oh God. <laughs> I work a lot on Facebook too. It's like, you got to just make the jump. Yeah. Make the leap. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. All right. You're welcome guys. And if you got a good picture, can you send it to me? I did not get a good picture. You oh. boomerang. <laughs> <laughs> we, already, we already lost a few in the crew, but <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> we'll take it anyway. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. You're welcome guys. Have an awesome night. Everybody, uh, got some fire for the end of this year. Oh Come yeah. Out, Finish strong, baby. Bye guys. Thanks Kath. You're welcome. Bye everyone.